Hey guys, Buffering Gaming Bad today, bringing you a video for our weapon convergence series for our Cold War weapons. And today we're covering the Swiss Carbine Model 1931, or the K31 as it's known, as well as in real life and the game here in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Warzone Integration. So let's go ahead, we'll jump into this. I'll show you some clips from this weapon utilizing it in Warzone, just the ground pickups, because I do not have it unlocked in the battle pass yet. And since I uninstalled Cold War, I cannot show you the gameplay against bots today. But we'll show a little bit of gameplay using this and the ground pickup loot in Warzone today. And we'll go into some detail with the weapon itself. So let's go ahead and back out and we will deselect all of our attachments here. So we have the base K31. Now, if we back out of our custom lobby here, we'll go ahead and take a look at the battle pass. Where you get this weapon is going to be at tier 31. So you can see I'm not quite there yet. Didn't buy into the battle pass this season. So you have tier 31 the Swiss K31 or the Carbine Model 1931. So go ahead and go back. We'll go into a custom private game here and take a look at the K31 that we're gonna be building here. So you can see first off the 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 icon for the weapon is that of the, <laughs> not the K31, it's the L96 or the Tundra. Um, and then when you put attachments on it, it really makes it look really goofy in game. Not quite sure uh, why that is but we'll go ahead again and we'll start with the base k31 here so first off for attachments we're going to skip out on the muzzle there's really no muzzle device that we'll put on this however you can see the different ones that are available here with this weapon you have russian suppressors for some reason on this i would expect to see more so the wrap suppressors and some of the ones you see on the western rifles here in cold war instead we have the pbs4 and the pbs1 sound suppressors on this uh weapon as a swiss sniper rifle which is is a little weird. I, maybe that's an, a, a mistake because it's showing the icons for the wrap suppressor and the sound suppressor for the other Western rifles. So have to see if they fix that down the road, but we'll skip out on that attachment. For the barrel length in real life, the barrel length for this is going to be uh, 25 inches, slightly over. So the base barrel length is actually uh, very short. It looks like it's probably around 18 inches is be my best guess, or maybe it's even, uh, maybe it's even closer to 21. We can try and compare it, but we're going to go with the 24.9 recon, combat recon, because this is the closest really you can get to the 25 inch barrel. You have obviously some that are also 24.9. There's three barrels that are 24.9 inches, but combat recon is going to increase your bullet velocity also, which this rifle definitely needs in game. You'll see some of the gameplay that I'll show you at the end, just utilizing this uh, or t using the base pickup that we have the different options available in wars on the muzzle velocity and the bullet velocity is, is horrible on this weapon on the ground pickups for the most part. So this will increase your bullet velocity and give you the barrel that's closest to the real life length of 25 inches. So we'll go ahead and select the combat recon. Now for lasers, obviously you have your same lasers that we have really on any weapon here. Um, these are not going to be applicable for this weapon. Obviously, if this is supposed to be repurposed, this is a World War II weapon or designed in 1931. So prior to World War II, the Swiss never really saw action in World War II, so it was never used in combat. Uh, however, for the purposes of Cold War, the fact that this is supposed to be repurposed or being used in uh, the 80s timeline, it would make sense to put something like this on. But for conversion purposes that we're doing uh, the real life weapon in 1931, we don't want any lasers on the weapon. So the optic, you have this base sniper scope that you start with the weapon. You have all your same options that you have with every rifle available here. We're going to go with the iron sight. So the iron sight is just going to give us uh, a more accurate K31 model here. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then for the stock option, the base stock is really fine. However, I'm going to go ahead and put on the SAS combat stock. But you can take a look at some of these I was, some of these butt stocks. I was looking at these and some of them are very strange. So we have the tactical stock, which, okay, that, look, that looks pretty good. The wired stock, very, very odd looking. Uh, you can see it's supposed to be like a sawed off with whatever that's supposed to be looks very strange duster stock doesn't look too bad the no stock option really kind of threw me because it it just looks very weird i'm not sure why that would be there i guess there's they're supposed to uh say that the, the butt stock could be fitted on to this is really what that would be. the only reason that would be like that which would make sense but it just looks very very strange and then we have the SAS Combat, which we'll go with, and the Raider stock, which also is a pretty good option, but some odd-looking stock options. Now, the SAS Combat stock is going to give us the firing movement speed, the aim-walking movement speed, and the ADS firing movement speed. Cons of hip-fire accuracy, but since this is a sniper rifle, we will definitely not want to be 
hit firing this thing. So we'll go ahead and use the combat stock. And again, you just have that uh, pretty interesting, you have basically the cheek pad to rest your cheek on and you have additional ammo that's held in there. And uh, unfortunately no stripper clip available in that little pouch too, because that's really how you would load this. But if you needed a chamber one, that would make sense. So we'll go ahead and put the combat stock on. Next up, rear grip, we're gonna skip this. You have all the same attachments here. Ammunition, the base is a six round, which is accurate to real life. Um, we're gonna go ahead and leave that, but you can see the other options are the standard with some of these uh, sniper rifles. The, you have the seven, the speeds, and then the nine rounds available. And then the underbarrel attachment, again, pretty unique, interesting looking uh, underbarrel attachments here. You have the infiltrator grip, which is actually not too bad. I think that just gives you a little extra pad in there, which you could definitely use that. It looks pretty cool. The patrol bipod looks very strange. The bruiser grip, just kind of some uh, tape thrown on there. The bipod, and then the S pod bipod. But you can see there, this this bipod is kind of just supposed to be, I guess, screwed on there. Uh, screws top left right or bottom left right. Looks a little weird, but we're gonna go ahead and skip that. And this is our final design for our K31. Now, some interesting things about this rifle is that the You'll notice the reload action, the rechamber action here. This uh, big pulley on the left or the right-hand side of the weapon is the straight pull or the straight pull, straight bolt action weapon. So instead of uh, having to cock and turn the bolt to rechamber around, it's just a straight pullback to rechamber around and and eject the spent cartridge. Which unique design to the K31. Very interesting design uh, and a successful design. You also have the iron sights here that are also mounted there. Different variants of the K31 had a side-mounted iron sight as well as a telescopic sight on the left-hand side here. I believe those are the K31-43 models. However, those not present here. Now, one thing to note, the magazine, as I said, is a six-round magazine. Now, typically, these were not ejected from the rifle. What you would do is pull the bolt back and utilize a... There was custom-made paper stripper clips that would cover the entirety of the magazine and you would use a stripper clip to reload the weapon that way instead of ejecting the magazine. I believe it was a similar, may have been a similar situation with like we covered in the PPSH yesterday, whereas the magazines had the same serial numbers designated with the rifles and they didn't mix and match very well. So you probably wanted the serial number for the magazine that went with the serial number for the rifle. That could be the purpose, but um, mainly these are just utilized with custom made paper stripper clips to reload these for the six rounds. Now, as I said, the iron sights there are also, uh, adjustable. You can see them there. You can adjust for different lengths, um, or distances, I should say. And then you also have a, a pretty cool design here on the right hand side of the rifle. That being the safety engaged right there. It's a little hard to see, but right in front of the of the bolt i guess you we want to want to call it you see that little little hinge there or that little thing that's sticking out almost directly above the magazine there's a little lip there that is the safety mechanism that's there that would uh that would engage the rifle's safety so you can see the, see it right there you can just reach up with your trigger finger and hit that and then obviously you can also inject the magazine there if you needed to on the bottom of the magazine like that. It just clips right in. However, like I said, it's mainly loaded with the stripper clip. So this is our final design for the K31. Now, if you're trying to use this for Warzone or even a multiplayer, probably the best options, you probably want to go with the base scope. But first off, let's go ahead. I'm just going to show you the final design again. This is the, the final design for the, the weapon covers of the K31. Again, looks pretty cool. Not a bad design. Very kind of bland in my opinion, but again, it is a, it's a rifle from 1931, so you really can't expect too much more than that. Now, if you're trying to use this for Warzone, like I said, you would probably want the base sniper scope. You would still want to keep the, the combat recon barrel because it's going to give you the best bullet velocity. You'd want the PBS-4 or the GRU suppressor. That'll give you the sound suppression, keep you off the minimap, vertical recoil control, bullet velocity increase, as well as the effective damage range increase, cons, ADS speed, and aiming stability. And then you would probably want something like a seven round speed mag or even maybe a nine round. And then that's probably about it. You could even throw on something like a rear grip or perhaps a bipod for this weapon. This would kind of be your, your best loadout option. Now, 
This rifle also fires the 7.5 by 55 Swiss cartridge, which was utilized for the uh, GP11, or it's designated GP11, but it was utilized on some other different variants of the rifles as well. Uh, that the Swiss uses, I believe it's a custom Swiss cartridge, but this right here would be your custom Warzone design that you would want. And then again, the base weapon, if we would just take these off for the actual conversion itself, just remove a couple of attachments and throw on the iron sights, or you could even use the base sights that are on this because they did have uh, kind of like a dovetail mount where you could mount the optic on the K31 as well. And one thing to note here, just the 24.9 inch combat recon barrel, if we compare that with the, I have the this bottom class here, I have the base barrel, so I didn't put any barrel option on there. So you can see the difference in length is uh, quite a bit. It's probably, uh, I would say, a good three inches difference with the barrel length there. So you're probably looking at a base of 21 inch barrel on this weapon with the 24.9 inch here with the uh, the one we covered. But again, you can see we added the attachments. So you can see the icon for the weapon here is just if I back out and come back in, it might load. So it, A, it doesn't load right and it utilizes the Tundra. And it just looks insane <laughs> when you put a different attachments on it. But this is the final design for our Swiss K31. I'll go ahead and put the iron sights back on there. So here's our final design for the K31 firing the 7.5 by 55 Swiss round. So going into just some gameplay here while we go through some real life stats again, I'm just utilizing the one that's picked up in Warzone as ground load. There's a couple different ones you'll see me use here. The bullet velocity, not the best on this thing. I, I have been able to hit a few shots, but um, some of these, the bullet velocity, you really need the right attachments on this thing to get the right bullet velocity and the effectiveness for this weapon. I think it handles really good. It's quick, kind of similar to the Car 98 or the SPR. But again, if you're not using it with the right attachments, it's going to be very, very difficult. The bullet velocity on some of the ones that I put them on the ground is, is horrible. And I find myself uh, trying to compensate for bullet drop more so than I do with a base M82, which is insane. So uh, some some information about this weapon in real life. The type is a straight pull bolt action carbine. Again, for the K31, it had its own custom straight pull bolt, which was a unique design for the time. Place of origin is Switzerland. It's been in service from 1933 to 1958, and design took place in 1931. There was a total of 528,000 units that were built. The mass overall for this rifle, it comes in at 4 kilograms, or 8.82 pounds. The length is a 1,105 millimeters, or 43 inches overall. And then the barrel length, like we covered, is going to be that 25-inch barrel. Cartridge is the... 7.5 by 55 millimeter Swiss cartridge. The action straight pull bolt action to the custom design. Now the muzzle velocity in real life is going to be 780 meters per second or 2,559 feet per second. The effective firing range is going to be 500 meters or 547 yards with the maximum firing range being 5,500 meters or 6,000 in 15 yards so this this is a rifle that was known for being very accurate as well um the swiss prided themselves on accuracy and sharp shooting so this is a rifle that was built to be very accurate even with the iron sights feed system is a six round attached to a box magazine however they utilize the custom paper stripper clips most of the time as well as the sights being the iron sight and or telescopic sights and like i said different versions of the rifle had uh, built-in telescopic sights that would flip up from the left-hand side mount. They'd be on there. It was just give you a low-powered zoom. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, they did have some reliability issues with those as well, unfortunately. So you can see the gameplay. Not the best rifle, however. I have hit some crazy headshots with some of the different variants you pick up on the ground. I'll probably never level this thing up fully, maybe just from utilizing it as ground loot. Um, pretty interesting rifle. Not bad to use. Um, again, this is another World War II or pre-World War II rifle. Same with the PPSH from yesterday, which was a World War II rifle or a submachine gun, I should say. Let me know down below what you guys think of this. This is the Swiss K31 here for Cold War Season 3. Also, all my social media information, Twitter, Instagram, things like that are all down below in the description. We also have a link to the Discord, so be sure to check those out if you want to get a hold of me. Those are the best places. And if you're enjoying the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Until next time, this is Buffner Gaming with the Swiss K31 or the Carbine Model 1931. Till next time, Buffner Gaming, out.